Uh, welcome everyone for a COVID safe workplace application uh, DivNet Create session, uh, which is mainly focusing on integrating Meraki dashboard APIs and WebEx Teams APIs in a single application. Um, my name is Ramon Gabo, and uh, I'm collaboration and contact center consultant for almost 15 years. Um, recently, in the past five years, I'm basically focusing on uh, API integrations and network programmability and how can we drive different customer business cases uh, using API across multiple platforms. So um, quickly, our agenda in this session is focusing on understanding what are the APIs? Why would we need them to integrate multiple applications together? And I'm going to start talking mainly about the use case that I use different applications. Uh, basically, in my case, I'm using what we call a COVID safe workplace. Uh, just to adapt to our new COVID world. Uh, just an interesting application, interesting use case I was keep thinking about, especially uh, considering the restrictions that we're having nowadays with COVID and all of these kind of things, and how can we use technology to assist us on that space? Um, and basically, in order to build the COVID Safe Workplace application, I was relying mainly on Meraki dashboard APIs and also WebEx Teams APIs. So we're going to quickly see how we can build uh, an application depending on those APIs and how can we use Python scripting to do that. Uh, I'll quickly go through each uh, type of APIs and how, how, how do they build my Python script across that. And you can definitely add an extra module if you want to do so. I'll talk quickly about how are we going to do that as well. By the end of the session, you will see how are we going to bring both worlds together the Meraki dashboard APIs and the WebEx Teams APIs in a single uh, application, which is in my case called COVID Safe Workplace application. So let's quickly deep dive on what's, what's an API. API is what we call it an application programming interface. So nowadays, uh, APIs are used to decouple the application from the infrastructures that provide the service. So you don't have to know what's behind the scene when you integrate with an application anymore. So uh, in the old days, we used to have an application and uh, the interfaces could be a command line, could be a GUI interface. Nowadays, most of the applications provide an extra interface, which we call it an API interface. And you can access those APIs through scripting, such as Python, such as Node.js. Uh, it's completely up to the, language, the programming language that you want to use to do that. APIs are simple as that. It's just a, a language to talk between two different applications, two different worlds that they don't talk to each other. You don't have to know that what's behind the scene to get them talking to each other. That's the whole idea and that's the whole concept of using APIs nowadays. Uh, there are different protocols to run APIs. Uh, there is what we call it SOAP protocol, protocol, there is RPC, and also there is what we call a REST API, and that's the most popular type of API protocol that we usually use. I just want to quickly show to you what are the REST APIs looks like and how, how do we use that. And the reason behind that, because our business case is mainly relying on REST APIs, and how can we use Meraki dashboard or WebEx Teams REST APIs to basically to build an entire business case. Uh, I'm, in that example, I'm using actually a screenshot from Postman tool. Postman tool is a, is a very useful tool if you're starting your career trying to find out what are the APIs looks like and how to test them, Postman is your tool uh, because you can use it basically to test any API to any application. Um, any API would be broken down to two pieces, which is the request and the response. The request is basically what you want to send to the application, and the response is what's coming back from the application to you, to your uh, to your program, or to your Python script, or to your Node.js, or whatever the programming language that you want to use. Um, in the request, there's basically the main component that you need to send is a URL, and you can see here in Postman screenshot that the URL which defines the resource that you're trying to access on the application. That resource could be, uh, it totally depends on the application. In my case, this is a Meraki dashboard API. It's trying just to access a, an analytic service for one of the cameras. So you can define those URLs pre basically uh, documented in, um, in the application API reference guide. So each application most likely would have its own API reference guide. You can easily find the URLs 
based on each application. Also, whenever you send an API, you need to define the method of the API. So it could be a get, it could be a post, it could be put, it could be patched, it could be delete. It depends, again, on the API or the operations that you're, can, you're actually trying to do. Most of the time, get method is just to retrieve information from the application. Post is to change information in the application. So it totally depends on what are you trying to achieve. Also, uh, you might need to send headers in your request. Uh, those headers would include the authorization information. Uh, so in our case in Meraki, for instance, we have a Meraki API key that we need to send it with our request to make sure that we're authorized to access those resources. Uh, you might need to send a body in, on your request, uh, and that body could be in a JSON format or an XML format. Um, and finally, when you get the response, you could be getting a response as simple as 200 OK and doesn't have any body, or it could be a 200 OK with some JSON and XML format as well, which you might need to parse that information in your code to extract the information and start using the data out of the body to try to build the logic behind it. So it's very important to understand what are you sending and what are you receiving, and you can only get that information from the API, API guide relevant to that particular application, either Meraki, WebEx Teams, or whatever the applications that you would be interested in. Um, Basically, what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to talk about our business case, which is COVID Safe Workplace. Uh, it's just a very simple business case I picked up during COVID and uh, basically just my way of trying to use technology to find solution for our new world. You, you know that COVID has changed the way that we live, so we need to find a way to live with that, but with technology, basically. Um, Nowadays, we have a lot of restrictions, as, as everyone knows. COVID infections are, happens in workplace and indoor venues. We have a lot of capacity limits. Um, I live in Australia, for instance. We, we have some restrictions, and we need to make sure that uh, workplaces uh, are compliant. We need to monitor the capacity within the workplace. Uh, even after we having high, high vaccination rates, we're talking about 50 to 75 percent workplace uh, workforce is allowed back to the offices. Uh, so. It's a bit tricky to how to monitor and enforce compliance in that space. Um, and, and that's why we need some sort of an automated way to do it. Um, and that's, that's where the COVID safe workplace, uh, workplace application come into the picture. Uh, it, it's actually, a, it's, it's a very simple Python script that I build, but you can add a lot of modules to it. So uh, you can basically use the Meraki dashboard API and MV camera uh, analytics to integrate it with the COVID safe workplace application to monitor how many people are actually in the room. And that would help you after that to make a decision. If, you're, uh, if there is a capacity breach or any limit breach, you can send a message straight away using WebEx Teams or uh, might be you're interested in Microsoft Teams notification or you want to send a Tolio SMS. Uh, all of these are different channels that you can use basically to send notification if someone is breaching the policy. Or, uh, and also, you can integrate it with your access control system if you want to lock down the room so no one can get in, if, if there is a capacity limit breach. All of these can be, can be done, and you can actually do some sort of compliance enforcement with that application. And that's an interesting part. Um, in, in, in our session, we're not going to focus on all of these modules. I tried to pick up uh, only the two modules that uh, I basically built at this stage, which is the WebEx Teams and the Meraki Dashboard APIs. Uh, but feel free to build your own function because it's all about API integrations, as I mentioned before. So you can see my application at this at this point of time. It's basically focusing on Meraki Dashboard APIs and camera analytics, and also focusing on WebEx Teams as a notification channel. So. Uh, this, the application in a simple format that, that we're going to cover now is that just if the capacity limits exceeding certain value or something like uh, if it's if you're breaching the limits, what you're going to do, we're just going to send a notification message to the operational manager in, in WebEx Teams. Um, and that's basically uh, just saying that there is a breach on this area or something like that. Um, as I said, the application is fully customizable. You can, you can basically do... Uh, you can add more things to it by just add access control, add a different communication channel, notification channel. It's completely up to you how to handle that. It's just a matter of 
some basic development scripting. As I said, it's two components. It's a Meraki dashboard APIs and where it steams APIs. And we're going to build each one of them uh, separately. And then at the end of the session, we're going, to, we're going to bring both of them in a single script so we can see how all work together. So I'm going to start by talking about the Meraki dashboard APIs. As, as a simple fact is any APIs that you're interested to know more about, just go and search for the API, API guide for the application that you're after. Uh, for Meraki, for instance, uh, they have a very good API guide, so you can just, uh, we are going to see that in the, in the next slide. And in order to send the Meraki APIs, there is actually three steps. You need to make sure that you have an authorization key, and then you need to decide which APIs that you want to use, and eventually the response, you need to capture the result for, that, for the response that you're sending. Um, in fact, um, the, the API that we're going to use is called Get Device Camera Analytics Live API. And you can actually see this. This is a URL if you want to uh, go and, and just check it yourself. And once you go to this URL, you will see an example on how to send this particular API. And don't forget, before sending any API, you need to decide how you want to authorize or authenticate your API. And that's based on the application. Um, in Meraki, Basically, the authorization uh, or the authentication is done using an API authorization key. So you need to generate that key from the Meraki dashboard uh, before going through the API itself. So uh, if you want to do that, just go to account.meraki.com slash secure slash login slash dashboard and score login and uh, basically go to settings. Don't forget to enable uh, the access to the Cisco Meraki dashboard API and generate a key. Just copy it, store it in a safe place because we can. We are going to use it later in our code. The next step is the API itself. So if you go to the developer.system.com slash Meraki slash API dash V1, you would be able to see a list of the API commands that you can send to Meraki dashboard. Um, and the one that we are interested in is get device Meraki, uh, get device camera analytics live. And the good, with th the good thing with that, um, from this website, you would be able actually to see which headers need to be sent, what are the responses that you're getting back, and you can actually simulate an actual API that's being sent. So in this example, I'll be able to see the URL that I can send, the method of the API, which is get in my case, the headers I would need to send, the most important header for me in this situation is the Cisco Meraki API keys that we just got from the previous uh, slide, and then the response. The response we're going to talk about in a few minutes because the response would include how many people actually in the room. And that's what we that that's the information that we're after from this API. The good thing is from, from this particular side, I would be able also to get the information about the Python script that I'm going to build. I'm going to use Python in my application. So and it's easier for me just to copy that script. So if I go to the Meraki dashboard API website and just go to Python script. I'd be able to find all of the uh, script information that I would name. Uh, in the script, it's, it's as simple as that. We are using the requests library, and we are defining the URL here, which is the resource that we're trying to access. It's camera analytics. And, and basically, we don't need to send the payload. And, and the headers, which is one of them, is a Meraki API key. And eventually, we are trying to call that function, which is a request function, to uh, send the get request and that the URL, which we just configured, and uh, eventually the headers, and that the response variable will hold all of the responses back to that API. And then later on, we need to parse this information. And we are, we're going to see that down the path when we build the script. And that's the response back that we got when we, start, when we send the API. So the response is, in that situation, is a JSON format. Um, and JSON, for me, I always look at it as if it's a dictionary. So you can see uh, there is a parent level, and at the bottom there are some child levels. So uh, the parent level would have the time slot and also the zones, because we are trying to access cam uh, uh, Meraki camera analytics, and you could have multiple time zones. Uh, sorry, multiple zones, actually. Um, so you can have a zone number zero, you can have a different zone, another zone based on the camera configuration. And each zone, you can tell that basically the, uh, the Meraki dashboard API would, would be able to inform you about uh, how many persons or how many vehicles on, on that particular zone. 
So our target is to get that information out of the response and just get it accessible in our code so we can make a decision based on it. Um, so, so that's basically a simple function on how can we trigger that API. Uh, that function is relying on uh, the two main libraries. We are going to use the JSON and the requests library. Uh, the request is basically just to send the API and the JSON is to parse the response back. Uh, the second step, I defined a variable, which is a Meraki API key that we just configured uh, earlier. And then we are defining this small little function just to send uh, the get device camera analytics and get for us back the information about how many people in the room, basically. Uh, so uh, this function is called the Meraki underscore get underscore person underscore count. It does, we here, we define the URL of the Meraki. Uh, the header is basically just the Meraki API key. And, and the response would be just a response for that request that we're sending. And after we get the response back, we just need to parse the JSON data. And that's why we're using that JSON.loads function to parse the data back. And the variable would, that would be holding how many people in the room is basically called person count. And that's basically by navigating to zones and zone number zero. And I'm interested for on how many people or how many persons in the room. And once he calls this function, it's basically just printing out how many people in the room. And that's basically the first component of our application. The second component would be WebEx Teams, which is basically going to send a notification message if the person count is higher than certain value. Uh, the second component, as I said, it's more around WebEx Teams API. And that's what we want to talk about here. So uh, in order to send the WebEx Teams API is we need to do basically three steps. Number one is we need to create a bot for WebEx Teams to basically to create a token again uh, to send the, the message on behalf of the bot because we don't want to use a personal WebEx Teams account to send, to send the message. Uh, that's why we need to create a bot. We need to uh, get the token of the bot. And finally, we need to use the API, which is called Create Message API, to send the message. Uh, so these are the main three steps to send the WebEx Teams fun, uh, to send the uh, to send the message via WebEx Teams, um, and then we're going to see the entire function in a few minutes. Um, again, it's it's as easy as that. If you need more information about uh, how to create a bot, just go to developers.webex.com/docs/bots, and, and you can actually create the bot straight away from there. Just just it's very easy. Three steps. Just click create bot. And give it a name. In my case, I just called it COVID safe. And uh, in fact, I just uh, found the token here. I just copy the token, store it somewhere because we're going to use it back again in our script. So uh, that's a simple function that we created just, uh, just basically to send the WebEx Teams message. That's it. It's very simple. And then later on, we're going to uh, integrate both of these functions together to get our COVID safe workplace application. So uh, the function mainly uh, import two main libraries, which is the requests and the operating system library. I define the WebEx Teams token as one of my uh, Windows environment variables. And also I define the recipient, which is in our case would be the operational manager or the operational teams that would get notification on a breach. Um, and then we created this little small function, which is basically we define the URL to send the API message, um, which is in our case, it just uh, slash v1 slash messages and then uh, i created the, a variable called access token uh, the headers would be just including the token and eventually the body would be including who do you want to send the message to in our case it would be just abc at kitim.com.au or whatever the whatever the recipient that you would be interested in and and eventually as i said by by the end of this uh function we usually just uh, trigger that function by simply we want to send a request the post, so that's a post actually method, um, and the URL is API URL, which is the one that we defined earlier. The body is just uh, the body which includes the, uh, the recipient and the headers, which is the authorization key. Once you call this function, this function would be as simple as that: just send a text message to the recipient saying COVID COVID policy breach has been reported on in the meeting room or something like that. Um, it, you can see we built two modules. Our last step is basically bring both of them together in a single application. So now let's talk a bit about the integration and how can we bring both of these functions together. 
Um, so in that in that Python script that we built is basically uh, we refer to the Meraki get person count function and also the WebEx send WebEx send message function. So the get person count function will just capture how many people in the room and the send the message function is just simply send the COVID policy breach message to the operational manager. Uh, so uh, the the main component of the integration is just an if statement. We're saying if the person count is higher than the capacity limit of the room, uh, just send the WebEx Teams message. You can definitely get the capacity limit uh, just by defining a variable in the script, or you can even capture that from SQL database or any other like Microsoft Teams, room calendar application or anything like that, if you're interested to do so. Uh, you feel free to add extra modules if you would like to do so. It's it's not it's not hard to do that. Uh, thank you so much for attending my session, and it was really exciting day to see you all.